Hi everybody, it's Mark again, and I hope everybody is enjoying my videos. I hope that you're learning things. Well, I finally, um, boy, finally getting around to uh, finishing up this triple plate little bitty cuckoo clock. And uh, I had some issues. There are still some issues. And uh, this video will explain what those issues are. If any clock has ever kicked my butt as far as a manually operated cuckoo clock, besides a mic and uh, it is this triple plate cuckoo clock. There is no sense of them designing the clock the way they did in this video will explain what I'm talking about so kick back relax grab something to eat grab something to drink grab a cigarette grab a beer uh, whatever you would do to uh, uh, relax uh, to um, watch my YouTube videos I, I I'm not gonna disappoint you the clock does tick it does cuckoo but I'll explain further here you can see the movement is still ticking away and here you can see that the weights have dropped evenly it like I said it's been running for about nine and a half hours now and the weights are evenly the clock is ticking away because the weights are even it's telling me that the uh, uh, strike is working properly if the weights were not dropping evenly then it would tell me that this uh, something isn't working right and so you know you don't have to sit here and watch the thing work all you have to Look at in my parts uh, bucket. Both tops were in there. And I decided to go ahead and whether it's right or not, I'm going to put the one with the wire that lifts the bird up on the, um, the low note bellow like in every other clock. Well, most every other clock. Some high note bellows have the wire on I have a Seth Thomas cuckoo clock that's designed that way but anyway I'm going to go ahead and repair these bellows I've got a YouTube video I got several YouTube videos on repairing bellows the trapezoid bellows are a little bit harder to do but you still can do them here's my uh, bag of materials that I use except for I was just video chatting with somebody he purchased some bellow bellows and bellow tops to purchase a bellow he paid twelve dollars a piece for one of these off time savers I got this entire bag off of eBay for twenty four dollars it comes with instructions, but you can throw those instructions away because my YouTube videos show you how to do them without reading all these instructions. These instructions to me are confusing. Okay, to include prep, putting the bellows together, everything, we're talking 20 minutes for two bellows. I still got to clean up my mess, but that's 20 minutes. At $25 for these sets of bellows, and that's 50 bucks plus an hour. I want to talk about these clips. Just Mike uses these clips. It's what you can use to uh, to close up the bellow. Um, Tyvex, and this is the reason why I don't order it from Time Savers. Tyvex gets a memory in it, and their product comes folded. I don't like folded up product, but uh leaving these clips on 
what you uh, what you do is when you got it all together, you fold the sides. You push the front in as you're folding the sides, and you should see that X. And then you close it up, put a clip on, and let it sit for a while. Uh, go do other things. That way it keeps that memory. It's easy to make the, those clips. Take a straight piece of wire, bend it. You're making like a, a Pac-Man. Yeah, I use that word a lot, but... And so now I have another... clip that I can put on a bellows. You can use them if you sell a clock, if you store a clock. Uh, like I said, uh, you don't want to leave the thing open when you store it. You want to close it. Um, if you store it for too long, the material is going to eat up. But anyway, when you ship a clock, put these clips on. When you just get through making the bellows, Put the clips on that way they stay conformed uh, uh, to that shape that you want and so now i could do other things whoever put the case back together when they took it apart didn't do a very good job there's this great big long crack right here a big gap and i looked at taking this thing apart and i think it would be i i would damage it more so what I'm going to do is my super glue and baking soda trick. And all it's going to do is not only fill in the gap, but it will make it more secured. Make it stronger. Put the super glue down and put some baking soda on top of the super glue and repeat. And then with the uh, six foot roll, ten foot roll, whatever you want to use, you probably won't notice it. You have to uh, apply the super glue in a, a small layer of baking soda, because if not, it it doesn't. It's not strong. And then with your permanent markers, your color markers, you fill it in. At least there's no gap now. And like I said, with permanent markers, color markers, you fill it in. I'm going to let it dry before I do that. Now I chose uh, the wrong furniture scratch marker. But to me, that looks better than a great big gap. Uh, to each his own if you don't like it. And like I said, it makes it stronger. I'm about ready to put the movement back in. I got the cuckoo bird connected back to the door. Remember I told you that the cuckoo bird has got his own little mount, which is really cool. But the issue is, what brings the cuckoo bird back inside when it's done cuckooing? Uh, I talked to you before about this tab right here being bent. I don't know if that has to do with uh, bringing the cuckoo back inside. The cuckoo bird's tail is a piece of wire that's looped. And that might have to do something with bringing uh, the, the bird back inside the door. Or that wire that is on that movement that trips the, the music. That might have something to do with uh, bringing the cuckoo back into its door. But I have to figure that part out. As I originally thought, this wire right here that trips 
when the music plays, we already discussed this. It, it's what allows the, uh, sorry, not music, cuckoo, to play. It goes underneath that bent tab in the door that the cuckoo is mounted on. And it, when it lifts, it pushes the cuckoo forward by hitting that bent tab. And when it goes back down, the way the cuckoo clock is designed, it automatically closes. I think it's a really cool. So just like I do with all my other clocks, putting the minute shaft into the hole that you hang your clock up with. And like I said, with this clock, uh, the, um, uh, the time takes the front two holes. So drop a, um, already got the left chain in, drop the chain down, have your magnetic screwdriver next to the hole or magnetic tool and it brings the chain out and you can pull it through. I got the chains about half, about half and half. So now time for the uh, strike. Takes the rear two holes. You just have to uh, make sure you got the right chain for the right hole. So I'm going to continue doing that and then put the movement in. Not like that. I had to take the bird out. It wasn't working properly. And uh, the, like I said, the uh, steeples came out of the case. But what makes the uh, bird come back in is the tail, the weight of the tail is what makes the bird come back in. This is really fun working on this clock. Um, I got the low note bellow in and it works. And as you can see, I got the wire underneath the bird's tail, and it works. Now to put the high note bellow in. That's something wrong, because the bellows both raise at the same time. These wires are, the, there's no room. <laughs> my hands are so big and it's hard to uh, adjust everything. I have a After the Hunt Hunters novel uh, music, musical cuckoo clock that is the size of as a novelty clock, which is this size right here. However, I can get the bellows in and out. The only way to get the bellows in on this is to put the bellow in up top and then maneuver it until you can twist it so it's like that. As you can see, there's no way to put the bellow in the normal way. Now, with that said, I still have to get the wire came off, so I got to put it back on. The wire underneath the tail of the cuckoo clock, uh, the bird, while I'm doing all this. I love the clock. However, they could have made it just a little bit bigger 
so it could be easily worked on. You know, these are German people making these clocks. I have German hands. They're big. I wear a size 14 wedding ring. I probably wear a size 15 now because I'm gaining weight. But this is no sense in making these clocks like this. I don't know who made it. My Black Force group expert doesn't know who made it. But I like to talk to them about making this clock. I had this bellow in there once. But it is a pain in the butt. Wish me luck. I still have to make a back door for it. And maybe adjust a little bit more. But uh, we're getting there. The, uh, it's, it's such a pain to work on. And y'all thought regular 25s were bad. Try working on one of these. There's a lot that I love about this clock. But there's a lot that I don't care for. And the part that is so small for me to work on is part that I don't care for. I had to put the uh, left bellow in first, and I want to show you how much of a pain in the butt it is to put these bellows in. So you have to, the right bellow, you have to feed it in like so, and then drop it down. And there's no room for air in this thing. They should have made it a little bit taller and a little bit wider so you can work on it. Still working on this triple plate um, movement. The problem is the rack. And this cam right here is getting the timing just right. When this lever is tripped, the rack should go down. Okay, but the rack won't go down that well because it needs to have a little bit of space. I think it needs a washer. Put right here to have that little bit of space because if it gets in a bind then this lever here which would be the um, the other part of the rack on a regular cuckoo clock that drops onto the snail if it gets into a bind then it doesn't allow this thing to drop And they uh, they use a a four post nut. It's kind of hard to. Uh, I've got the rack marked with an arrow where I need this cam to go, but trying to do this on such a small movement is. Um, is a challenge 
Um, right now, it cuckoos, I want to say, ten times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And so I have to move this up two notches to where that arrow is that I have scribed on on the rack but it's a challenge I think I'm going to put a washer in there because trying to tighten this up and creating the space I need to allow the other part of that rack to drop is a challenge in itself so I think I'm going to put a washer behind this lever and the post. I'm no, sorry, the plate. So after all that, I tested it out and it would not stop cuckooing. So I took and undid this so I could look inside. And what happened, the staple had came out of the cuckoo mount so now i have to which would not allow that piece of wire that trips this lever that i was talking about um, so now i have to take it all back apart to attach that cuckoo mount fun 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 i need to make a spring for this piece right here, this uh, spring is uh, worn out. Select a piece of wire. Select a bolt that has threads on it. Put the uh, wire and the bolt into your cordless drill. Now you want to put quite a bit of the wire into the drill. That way you can maneuver it later. Now I got the drill and the wire in, uh, sorry, the uh, bolt and the wire into the drill. I want to uh, slowly turn the drill on so the wire goes around the threads. Now I have a spring that I can use for this clock. Just unthread it. And now you have a, a, a spring. You might have to select a different style of bolt. One with smaller threads or one with bigger threads. You might have to try some different wire. But um, you can easily make your own springs for what you want to to do give me a thumbs up hope this helps may god bless this is what is left of the spring that i took off it's not a lot this is the spring that i just got through making and put on and as you can see when I move the catch it springs back as it should still working on this triple plate clock and the problem is the bolt that you tighten the rack down on is so small it's not a, uh, a screw 
it's some kind of a bolt and I don't have a tool small enough for it so with this toothpick on it I can unscrew it as you can see but I can't screw it down so what I'm going to do is temporarily put some uh, super glue and baking soda on it so I can screw it down to adjust it. And that allows me to grab the toothpick versus trying to put a pair of pliers on this bolt. Now, even though this wire that I chose springs back in action, on the opposite side of this uh, movement, is a wire that trips this into action. That wire is what moves this lever right here that pulls this cam out of the way. That wire is not as strong as this wire. So even though it moves the lever a little bit, it doesn't move it enough because the green wire is thicker and stronger than the wire that is connected to this. So I need the same tensile strength, I guess you would call it, as the wire I took off. So I think a wire from my ink pen will work. Here's a wire from the ink pen, but it has a lot of um, curves in it. And I watched a YouTube video the other day of how to straighten out a wire. I need to demagnetize these pliers. Anyway, you drill a hole in a block of wood. I want to see if I can get this thing in the hole. My wood is too thick. Stand by. I got two different holes in this wood. So I got the wire in the bigger hole. I'm going to pull it through. And as you can see, it strained it out some. But now I have to put it in the smaller hole. And it will straighten it out more. But the block of wood is too thick so it's going to take me a while to put it through so I got it started in the smaller hole and it's going to strain it out more so I can work with that now I'm going to put it in my drill just like I did before and make a wire I'm finally starting to put this thing back together the um, wire that I put on this lever right here was too thick for the opposite side of the wire where the um, uh, uh, minute wheel with minute pinion turn that has the wire that trips this. This wire was too stiff. The other wire was too light. So I had to change out wires. And I'm putting the bellows in 
one at a time. But hopefully we'll get this thing together soon. I'm back on this uh, triple plate uh, cuckoo clock. The issue now is the gathering can with gathering pen, which is right here. When it's done cuckooing, the gathering pen is in the rack. So the next time it cuckoos, it the rack cannot drop because this lever here, this cam here, is cleared. It it pushes, it, it, so it clears. This is what stops the rack when it's all done. But when the next time it cuckoos. When this clears the rack, the rack should drop, but it's not because the gathering pen is stopping the rack from dropping. So I have to adjust that cam so the gathering pen is away from the rack. So now when this cam that stops the rack is moved, the rack drops because you can see the pen on that gathering cam hopefully you can see it it clears the rack I don't want this video to be long it's already gonna have quite a bit to it When I first started working on this movement, I really liked it. I thought it had some good ideals. But now that I've been working on it for a while, there's some issues that I have with it. Uh, for example, this is the high note bellow right here. It crosses over all of this other stuff to connect to the high note lift lever which is the bottom lever. It's a low note lever. The low note lever has a, an issue, but the high note lever has an issue where it has to cross over all the other stuff. And that's why there's so many bends in this wire. Um, but uh, the... Um, to me, they sound almost the same, the high note and the low note. But this is what came in the clock. This is what's going to stay in the clock. But it's uh, ticking away. It's cuckooing. Now it's time for me to glue this back on because remember I had to take this off in order to um, to get the movement out they should have made this thing just a little bit bigger okay this is going to be the final video of this triple plate clock um, as you can see, it's taken away. As you can see, it cuckoos. Okay, but there are some issues with this clock, and I'm not going to take it back apart. There is no sense in them designing a clock like this. You can't take the bellows out and the movement out easily. The best way is to take this section here off like I did. Um, with my big hands, I cannot maneuver and take that stuff out and put it back in. 
so um, as you can see it is ticking and it is cuckooing I had to repair the topper and that's what it looks like it didn't have a deer head with it and it's got this plastic deer head I don't think it goes with this clock but um, I hope y'all like this video like I said, I will not take this thing back apart. It'll be one of those uh, display items. Um, it works to a point. It cuckoos. It ticks. It's just that uh, um, everything was working fine. I put the thing back into the case. And I glued everything back up. Everything was working fine. And then, um, you know, I ran it for a day without it being in the case. And then you put it back in the case, you connect the bellows, and things start messing up. Um, if any clock has defeated me, it is this one. So, um... They, they they shouldn't have made it this way. Anyway, leave me some comments and may God bless each and every one of you.